So what I have is I have a, um, a large loop antenna running to a JFET oscillator. The oscillator is triggering, triggering into a monostable um, 555 vibrator with a set delay so that it can't come on again until the delay is off. So here's the on time, the delay, back onto the on time, the delay, back onto the on time. Now what that does is it turns on a uh, power set which fires a field from an accompanying loop next to my large antenna, which is connected to the JFET. So this is an error core transformer with error core coupling magnetic field feedback a new type of induction or a different type of induction. What I've done is I've taken the, and I'm sorry, and I have another coil, which is the feedback coil, and it runs to two amplifiers, a two-stage amplification system. So basically, the large multi-turn loop antenna triggers the JFET, which triggers the oscillations, which is running at 6 megahertz. That, in turn, goes back and triggers the monostable, which is running at uh, about 6 megahertz. I'm sorry, 6 kilohertz, the number SM mentioned. It fires, turns it on, fires, turns it on, which then turns on a field that couples back to the main loop. The feedback antenna picks all that up, and puts that out to, through to two to, um, other amplifiers, which just happen to work in the 6K range, like SM said. So now what I'm going to do is, at this stage, I don't have the amplifiers powering anything. The next stage is to power these guys, the auto, the auto wire turn loops. The, ins the inside one goes in, comes around, and then goes around the outside one. This, in this configuration, it's going to be the same direction. In the other, because Otto did it twice. He did one where the inside uh, wire ran with or the same direction as the outside vertical and then against, against the opposite direction. So I'm going to do both. Right now, I don't have these hooked up, and that's going to be the larger field um, oscillations in space. Now, what's interesting is on channel 2, the yellow, let me re back, let me re back on that. The system's running on 12 volts. This uh, 555 output is running at 14, 15 volts. Um, and the audio output is the yellow, or channel 2, is running at... 8 volts right now. <clears throat> the volume on the second stage is up all the way high, and I have a minor control on using amplifier 1, the input amplifier. So it goes the, um, the, 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 the close near-field oscillations go out to the amplifier, and then that goes to another amplifier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the voltage, I'm sorry, raise the volume on the first amplifier. slowly but surely, and I'm, not going, I'm going at the same speed, and then all of a sudden, this thing just turns on. Boom! See it? See that? I affect the field. I come out. It gets even better, which is different from typical antennas because when you reach in, the antennas get worse. They diminish. This one, the antennas get better. And now my uh, channel 2 signal is at 11 volts. This thing's running at an amp in uh, one and a quarter amps. Let's crank it up even more so. I'll get the amplifier up to 11 volts. Oops, and it shuts, has thermal shutdown. See, it shuts down, which is okay. It's okay. The amplifiers are designed to run at two amps. And something's very, 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 very warm.
But as you can see, it's got, I got quite a good signal coming back through this magnetic field. Can't touch a, can't touch a thing, which is what I want. I need my thermal, let me my infrared gun and we'll find out who's hot. Amplifier 1 is 90, amplifier 2 is 105, uh, the FET 83 degrees. Let's check our off on a coil. I think he's doing 82 degrees, okay. So the circuit runs at 80, 80, 83 degrees is normal. Yeah. But if I get that signal going too high, uh, something starts to get very hot. Uh, that fit down there, my J fit. Eh, yep, everything's around 83, 85 volts. I'm sorry, 83, 85 degrees. Now the secret to this circuit is this J fit oscillator with these three antennas. That is a Q multiplier circuit from the 1930s. When you look at the Q multiplier circuit, the minimum, the, the most minimum when you find on the, on the net, it is a TPU circuit with an amplifier in it. So we have a large loop antenna picking up any energy outside, going to a JFET, triggering an, a, a very high speed oscillator, which comes back and triggers the monostable, which fires a FET for a large current draw to create a parallel loop of feedback. So you got this oscillating circuit. The loop feeds itself. Then you have another loop which goes out to the amplifiers. Very, very, very simple circuit. <clears throat> I can see what SM is doing now. Oh, see, it's coming through again. See it? The 555 is shaky, but I don't think it matters. The more noise, the merrier, because you want these three antennas to just jack back and forth with each other. Let's check the heat again. No smoke and fire yet, so we're doing good. 112 volts on amp 2. 90 volts on amp 1 from the input amp. It's the first stage. So, <clears throat> this... Um, circuit. Once I found the Q multiplier circuit, every time I touch something to put something in, it just works closer and closer and closer to the TPU. Now, there's no mystery about it anymore. <clears throat> My next stage is to get these two outer ones, the top and the bottom, driven so that I can get this thing powered up further to vibrate. If I achieve vibration, I've got uh, storage in the capacitive field around the whole unit. And that's what we're looking for. It's nothing to do with power generation inside in circuitry. Not at all. It's storage outside in the field. This is quite, quite nice. And if I need to adjust this on time, off time, I can do so in the... Um, in the uh, monostable delayed re-triggering circuit is pathetically simple. When I came upon this, I just, I gasped, I gasped in, in sheer delight. But this uh, configuration here uh, is the most closest to what I perceive SM was doing. It's just simple circuitry. It's very, very small. Amplifier one, amplifier two. Q multiplier circuit. Two five fives, two five five fives. Uh, delayed retriggerable monostable vibrator. Uh, triggered via the inter interrelational coupling of the, of the of the three antennas. Um, And then the beauty of this helical antenna is the, is the E and the H field rotate as they go around. 
that's going to be real sweet to see. So anyway, that's all that I have for now. Just to let you see that. And by the way, if I need to trigger this, there's a coil there I can put a magnet to to, to get the oscillations going. I don't have to. This thing is a self-starter. But at one and a quarter amps, i got to find a way to get that down to... Instead of pulling power from the circuit, or from the wall, to be able to pull power from the, the resonant oscillations. Uh, just short of a self-destruct mode. The, um, the high side of the um, high side bandwidth of the Q of this antenna um, allows for domain um, precession with all of them aligned, with all of the domains aligned. Normally the domains are all over the place, you get precession and you can excite that precession, but they all stay within their own axes. At the high side of the Q, right there, you can get all the domains to parallel and then all process together, and, like tuning forks, and that's what we're trying to achieve. So the two areas that I have left next are to power up these external top and bottom horizontal verticals, and then to get the operation of the Q multiplier in the HSB of the, of the Q part of the um, operation. That's all.